Thank you, Alder Stevens. I'm used to doing a council. Okay. Now it's you. Okay, all set. All right. Uh, good evening. We'll call to order the protection policy meeting for Monday, September 25th, 2023. It is now 6.01 p.m. Roll call. Alder Morgan. Present. Alder Grant. Present. Present. Scannell. Alder Stevens. We're all present. Uh, Take a motion for approval of the agenda. So moved. We have a second. Second, I have. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Ayes have it. Uh, I'm sorry, hold on a second. That was. Who approved and who seconded? Um, I approve. You approved, I second. Thank you. To the approval of the minutes for September 11th, 2023. I move to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Alder Morgan, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays, ayes have it. On to a regular business. Mm -hmm. okay. Ready. Item number one for staff to present a report at the request of Alderman Weary for an update with possible action on rat complaints and inspections actions taken by the city. The previous purchase rat traps have been fully depleted. Should resources go towards purchasing more to help combat this community-wide issue? Good evening. Thanks for having me again. Bill Pappy, Housing and Zoning Enforcement Supervisor. Um, before we get started, just note, um, the city did not uh, purchase rat traps. It was the county, Brown County purchased rat traps. Um, and I would not recommend um, doing so. If the county wants to do that, that's up to them. But I would not recommend that the city um, do that. Um, so I um, gave you a packet. I'll go through a little bit of that, answer any questions that you have. Um, the request was to do a 10-year uh, report on statistics. So what this is, is um, any rat-related complaint that we have, we have received in the last 10 years. So those numbers are right there. On average, we average about 101 um, rat-related complaints per year. This year, it's, it's up a little bit. Um, as of September 7th, we had 129. Um, we peaked in 2017 to 2018. Those were the high years. That's when the, um, the, the issue was, was pretty prevalent. Um, 208 and 17, and then 277 uh, total complaints in 2018. Um, so we're kind of in that little bit of a cycle where it has spiked up again. Um, just a comparison, um, our compliance inspectors, um, as of September 11th, um, they have received 774 uh, total complaints for garbage litter, exterior storage, use, and stuff. So it gives you a little perspective of how many rat related complaints we're getting versus how many garbage litter and nuisance exterior storage that they're handling. Um, of those, they have 106 still pending. Um, uh, both Nate and John have closed out about 86% of all those complaints that they've re received this year. Um, in regards to the uh, rat related complaints this year, 129 we received. There's only 27 of them still pe pending with a 79% closeout rate. So, a um, little bit about what we're doing. Uh, we continue to educate on food, water, and shelter. Um, those resources, that is our biggest um, emphasis and the, the biggest issue that we're seeing. Um, what we do is when we get, when we get complaints, um, first thing we look at is, is where are those resources, where the resources are at in, in the neighborhoods. Um, generally, the same issues that we've been working on in the past. Uh, the further we restrict those resources and remove them, the more success we have at bringing the numbers down um, when rats are substantiated in the neighborhoods. Um, residents are doing an excellent job of reporting the concerns now um, so we can investigate the sources uh, of the problem quickly and take steps to address it. So uh, the request for service has been working out great. Um, you'll see that there's a map um, that I included in there. The primarily the complaints are all on the west side. Um, so when we receive that, um, my compliance inspectors go out and immediately check uh, the area that there is concern and they do an extensive proactive survey around the entire block of where the concern was. Um, to look for food, water, shelter, any obvious um, violations that or conditions that could be attracting the rats. Um, so they're doing an excellent job reporting those concerns, um, doing the proactive surveys. Um, both compliance inspectors spend a good deal of time making sure all the residents um, that have chicken that have chickens um, have obtained proper permits and are educated on the importance of rodent restrictions. So food, water, habitat cleanliness for people that are raising poultry and have those outside, um, making sure that the feed. Um, 
is being restricted and stuff, so that way only those animals are getting it. Um, these areas are monitored closely by staff to make sure ongoing compliance with that, and if there is a connection um, where there's a rodent population near there that they're getting the proper education and things we need to make sure that it's not expend, expounding the, uh, the issue. Um, biggest problem that we're seeing is feeding the wildlife and animals um, and garbage storage issues are tend to our biggest contributors to um, the, the complaint, the correlation of the complaint that, um, in regards to rats. So if residents are seeing those issues, if they're seeing people feeding you know, birds and squirrels where the food is directly on the ground, um, that's something that we'd like to know, we'd like to talk to the residents about. We're not saying that they can't you know, feed the birds and stuff, you just got to do so in a manner in which the food doesn't spill out onto the ground and makes it readily available for rodents and stuff. So um, a lot of times um, if the feeders and the, the things are applied directly on the ground where they're piled up, um, th that can create an excessive situation which attracts rodents in the evening time. So definitely we um, telling people to utilize requests for service to let us know if they're seeing things so we can get on it right away and make sure things are getting cleaned up. Um, there are numerous uh, privately uh, licensed pest, pest professionals that have been active in the neighborhoods that we've been active um, in, um, and they're helping residents on, on a, both a proactive and reactive basis and stuff. So um, once again, education is our biggest, our biggest tool um, that we have so to help uh, combat the problem. So see it included in the map there, um, in, in it as well as a brochure um, that we send out to folks. Uh, we also, when we do a survey, um, we send out postcards to everybody in the area. We utilize uh, the GIS map. So if we get a complaint on a particular neighborhood and we substantiate that there might be some issues um, that folks need to maybe correct and address, um, we'll send a postcard to all the homes in that area, kind of giving them a heads up about what they need to do. Inspectors will follow back up with that to make sure that they've addressed those and cleaned up those items. Any ones that do not or any areas where there are continuing to be uh, rat issues or nuisance issues, they'll leave those pending and make sure that they follow up um, on a regular basis to take whatever actions needed to make sure that they're getting taken care of. So after that, I'll leave it open to questions that you guys may have or um, questions that anybody in attendance may have. Questions or comments? Chickens really aren't a concern, are they? When people have chickens, it's, it's not so much the chickens. It's um, it's the food. It's the feed. It's how you're. It's how it's like any kind of animal. It's how are you feeding the animals, um, and making sure that the area that they're in is clean. Um, so there's the waste is being removed. How how those you know the birds are getting getting the feed that it's not just spread out all over the ground because if it is, um, rodents can get in there and eat it as well. And then that causes if there's a plentiful amount of food that causes the the population to spike. So. Um, we keep an eye on those to make sure that, uh, for the most part, they're all very clean. There's only been a couple where there's been a little bit of an overlap, and it was basically because of how the food was being given and stored. Good job. Good one. Thank you. So all these photos that we're looking at, I'm taking a lot of this has been taken care of already? Yes. Yep. So this is all examples of, uh, of complaints that we're receiving this year. So. Um, I believe the request was like background of what we've been doing. Um, so all the photos are examples of garbage um, exterior storage and conditions that we that we've seen. Um, it was part of the 774 complaints that we've seen that have been conducive to rats. So just a kind of example of what we've been uh, receiving. They're not. They're all. Some of them are all the same property. Um, they're kind of varied uh, throughout the year, but it kind of gives gives an example of the types of inspections that and the types of complaints that the compliance inspectors are dealing with and what we're seeing and why education is important. Um, why garbage storage and making sure that those you know th things are being stored properly and picked up and put away and um, reducing those things that we can that we can control to make sure that the population of, of the rodents don't doesn't spread. They may open the floor for public comment. You don't have to oh, raise your hand, they'll get there. You just want to you, okay. you I take it you guys want to speak as well? Okay, sure. I'll take a motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor. Second. 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 Okay. Well, uh, if, if you can come up here if you'd like. Sure. And if you could state your name and your address for the record. Please. Sure. My name's Margaret. Last name is Minch. I live on Meacham Street, 1011 Meacham. So, um, 
I moved, I bought my house in February of 20 and didn't know about the rat problem, but my full backyard is completely 100% fenced in. I have um, dogs, um, French Bulldogs, and um, I enjoy birds. So like woodpeckers, you know, um, uh, whatever. So I, I have a bird feeder and um, I keep it neat. Um, I have a bird bath that I fill with fresh water. I grew up loving birds, so to me as a taxpayer here, the fact that started this whole thing is my dogs got started getting sick and um, <coughs> ended up costing me about just under $2,000 to, I mean, I didn't realize what the issue was, but anyway, went out and examined my yard and I have no garbage, no anything, but the rats must have been coming in, so I started seeing holes underneath my fence. Um, <coughs> and then with the issue, taking the dog to the vet, and I thought, well, what is going on? What's wrong with my dog? So um, I started putting out live traps, and I sent in some pictures. So I've been working with John and Nate, um, and I sent him pictures of the actual rats. Some of them are like this, like bigger than a squirrel, and um, so I've taken away the bird feeders and stuff for a while, but they seem to still be traveling through the neighborhood. So I'm frustrated because I've dug down and put like dirt and stone and everything and now they're, they're still coming. So Nate just came by and I've been educated um, that they're supposed to only be traveling so many yards, so they must be in the neighborhood. and. Even though the flyers were sent out and like John and Nate have gone door to door, people are oblivious and they're like, no, we don't have a problem. So I'm wondering where they're coming from. Um, and for me, I can't afford to hire like pest control. So, um, and I don't want my dogs to get sick again. I can't afford that. and. I also don't think that as a taxpayer that I shouldn't be able to feed the birds. So I've put down like plastic underneath. I keep it really neat. I rake up anything that the birds, and unfortunately living with all the big trees in our neighborhood, we've got squirrels. So having bird feeders draws in squirrels, but um, yeah. And I don't like having poison either, you know, because of my dogs, but, um, and it seems like the rat population is too smart for the rat traps that like I bought like at Fleet Farm. So I don't know. I was hoping that the city would be able to do something, you know, find out where these homes are, you know, but I don't know where the garbage issue is in my neighborhood, but I know there's no critters actually on my property. They're traveling. So I'm just really frustrated. I'm hoping that the city can do something. So. All right, thank you. Uh, Alder Stevens, we should go to Zoom. Okay. Uh, is there anyone on Zoom who would like to speak to this issue? This is um, issue number one on the um, regular agenda about the uh, report from the Development Department about rats. Just unmute yourself and state your name and address. Yes. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Jean Eckers. And I've lived at 905 South Fisk Street in Green Bay for 38 years. Um, like the woman that just spoke, I like to feed the birds. And 38 years, I've never seen a rat until last week. I <laughs> uh, hope I don't see another one, but uh, this is the first time I've seen a rat in our neighborhood. Don't know where it's coming from. Um, we've only seen a couple. We did put out some. Um, we have heard that if you bake with um, baking soda and some oatmeal, we kind of put up our own uh, little rat traps to see if we might be able to control them that way. But that doesn't seem to be working either. So they moved into my into my neighborhood unexpectedly so they're obviously around i don't notice anybody um in our neighborhood who has a a lot of garbage around there is a neighbor or two that doesn't do a good job of picking up their um, dog waste and i heard that rats do like that i don't know if that's what's drawing them in or not 
So that's my only comment for tonight. Thank you, Ms. Right. Thank you. And then we'll go back to the room. You can come on up. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yes, Ms. Uh, Zibel, we're going to go back to the room, and so then I'll I'll um, let you know when it's your time turn to speak. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Brian O'Leary. Um, I live at 1224 Nicolay Avenue. Um, we've lived there for 21 years. We've had this ongoing rat problem, probably five, six years, um, except for the few years that I um, went to school at Whitewater. I've always lived in Green Bay. But this rat thing is its an ongoing problem, and I get it. I, I think I might even have you come to our house and we did some education thing, but it doesn't really, it's not really working. It's a continuing problem, and I'll just give you some things that have happened to our house on our next door neighbor in the last five, six years. Mike, my next door neighbor, he has a count. He counts 11, 12, 13 rats. I see him in the, in the front yard, and he's like, well, I'm up to 13 now, and then I tell Alderman Chris Weary about it. And then um, a couple years ago, there was a rat in a mouse trap in the backyard by our fence. So I had to take care of that. I mean, it wasn't, it was kind of gory just to have to do that. But anyways, so then um, my son, Liam, he likes to play basketball. He's got a, a basketball hoop in the back. Well, he's a strong kid, and so he would take the, the hoop and he'd pull it so that the base would come up and then there would be a rat there. And then uh, Winston, our dog, he would catch it. He would actually bite it and then flip it up in the air and then it would be dead and then we would throw it in the garbage. So I'm telling you that this is not going away. Now we just, um, my wife, she gets up in the middle of the night because she saw the holes. And the holes go over into the next door neighbor and you can see the holes there too. And we've been warning our neighbors about the rats. And then, um, so Lisa, she got a little upset about the whole thing. She's like, well, this is not, what if they get in the house? And then I heard if they if they bite the kids, they could get sick. And we got young kids in the neighborhood. So um, Lisa calls an exterminator. We've already spent $300. And I'm just wondering, can we pass that bill on to the city? Is that something we could do? Yeah. Okay. So they're going to come back. So they set these traps where they, the, the rats are going to go in, and then they're going to take the poison. And I'm with you. I'm like, I don't want this buried in my backyard. I don't know where they died. So they're going to go back into the nest, and then they're going to vomit this uh, poison out. And then the rest of the rats, including the, the queen bee or whatever they call her, she's going to eat it and then they're going to die and I'm like well how are we supposed to know if they're dead and how do we take care of their bodies well they just evaporate you know they disintegrate as they decay and I'm like well that's that's gross you know so I'm just telling you I get it the education thing but I could go next door and say Avery you got those two holes there I mean you got problems and I'm sure that they have problems. I'm like, if I get everything, I got rid of my bird feeder. We got rid of our bird uh, food. We got rid of our wood pile. We got, we took care of our lawn and we took care of our dog's, um, you know. Waste. Waste, thank you, thank you, Randy. I, I still think that there would still be a problem. And there's probably people in the neighborhood that go, they don't think that they have a problem, but they're there. They just haven't seen it. And you know what? It's almost gotten to the point. I work 70 hours a week. I work seven days a week. Um, but if we have to start this thing in the next spring where I go around the whole neighborhood, let's say Nicolet, and I knock on everybody's door, and I'm just going to say, hey, this is, this is a problem. And here's what we need to do, according to the city, but we need to get more involvement because this is a problem on the west side of Green Bay. And then if I have to take the next Sunday and go to the next neighborhood, 
then we'll just have to do it. But you guys, honestly, and I'm not trying to be mean here, you guys aren't getting it done. It's not happening. There's a problem. It's an ongoing problem. You just heard the gentleman say here that the the statistics are, are going up. And what about the people that know about it and they haven't done anything about it? I'm just saying it's not going away. And it's, I don't know, it's disgusting, really. So, 1224 Nicolay Avenue. Thank you. Okay, Thank I have you. a question for you. Yes, sir. Um, when you see him, are you reporting this to the city? Uh, well, I just emailed Chris. I, you know, rats at 1224 Nicolay Avenue. Howdy, Chris. Just to let you know, we have rats in the backyard. And then uh, we just hired an exterminator, and I wrote in there, can we get some compensation for it? So <coughs> I've reported to Chris, you know, several times, and I think this gentleman's come to my house, to be honest with you, um, a few years back. But it's, it's ongoing. And you know what? If I did everything I could, and if I could get everything Avery could do, and then Jeff could do, and when I went around the block, I don't think that's going to be enough. You have to have a more of a proactive stance on this. It's almost like you need to have one person. Okay, you know the boundary of where it's at. And if you took it one step further and, took, and it enlarged the boundary, and you found one person that's upset like I am, and that would go around and say, hey, listen, we got to tackle this problem, and gave them whatever means that we would need, so we could start really aggressively attacking this. The education thing, okay, but it's not enough. I'm telling you, because this has been going on for four, five, six, seven years. But I, I'm not only talking about uh, the rats, but if, do you have any of your neighbors still using bird feeders? Do you have any neighbors with uh, you not know, picking up the I, dogs? I have, some, I have some neighbors that could take care of their yard a little bit more. And that's fine, the education thing. And Chris has sent out this, uh, hey, you know what? If someone has long grass and they need to be reported. But really, honestly, Randy, you're going to do that in your neighborhood? You're going to go around to the guy that has a cut in his grass? You don't have to. Just report it to the city. You can do it uh, anonymously online. And that's okay. okay. the city's job. Right. Let okay. us do our job. I, I got it. I got it. I get you. But we need to be more aggressive. Somehow, because it's not going to go away. So, and you're going to get guys like me. They're going to start to say, "We got to start talking about this." And I'll go around the neighborhood. I'll waste an hour, hour and a half every Sunday during the spring, summer, and fall. And I'll talk to everybody in the neighborhood. And then they'll probably go, "Well, why don't you run for councilman?" You know? I said to Nicholson today, or the other day, I said to him, "I go, I said, Andy, you know, I got rats in my backyard." They're tearing up Hickory Hill, which is great because I'm hoping that they're going to finish, you know, rebuilding this street. But I said, we have poor deteriorating roads in Green Bay. Can you imagine working for the mechanics in, in Green Bay? Their alignments, they got to be going through the, the roof, you know, people's cars and whatever else. And then I said, and the school board's $20 million in the hole. I said, why do I want to live in Green Bay? And I told you, I've lived here all my life, except for the few years I went to school at Whitewater. Why would I want to live in Green Bay? I mean, this is a headache. It's really getting my Irish up, you know? And we're, you guys, it's not enough. We have to get a little bit more aggressive here. Did you Nicolay, is that on the west side? Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I was thinking. On the that. corner of 9th and Oneida. Ninth you and got Oneida. Oneida, Redwood, Marquette, Nicolay. Thank you. Yeah, well, can I just add something else? Do I have to come up? Um, there is one person, okay. but I'm not running. I'm just. Is that quite? It's yeah. basically I keep a really clean yard. I my grass is short. My bird seed is in a hard five gallon container. There's no other issues. Um, taxes went up, you know, significantly, and I can't afford to pay for an exterminator and to me it's frustrating like does the news need to find out about this so that it goes out to the whole community because I really 
Yeah, we don't know. Do I should be able to have a bird feeder and a and a bird bath. I mean, like this is crazy that I would have to remove all of that. But I also don't want to put the risk of my dog's lives on the line. Uh, is there like dogs that could be hired to find where these stupid <laughs> nests are? I mean, I'm I'm just wondering because as a taxpayer, I feel like the city should be really concerned and come down and they need to manage the problem. I had no idea that Green Bay had that issue and I just keep telling, being told about the education and that you should remove all food sources, all water sources, and I just don't understand why as a you know homeowner that I couldn't have a bird bath and a bird feeder without having disgusting disease carrying rodents and that nobody in the community you know warned me about it when I bought my home but I've been told since Kmart was knocked down that it's been a problem on the west side of Green Bay I guess is what I've been told I'm not from here I my, my whole life has been down in the Milwaukee area so I just was hoping that that the news or that the city would actually take it really serious and be able to do something else so All right, thank you Okay. Uh, Rebecca. Alder Stevens, you ready? Ms. Seibel, can you unmute yourself and state your name and address? You'd like to speak to um, Yes. Sure. Rebecca Zebo, 1082 Roscoe Street. So we have lived in our home for 23 years. Um, we first noticed the problem with rats when um, Cabela's moved in, the construction for Cabela's, and then even more with the construction with 41. So it's been going on for multiple years here. Um, and a couple of years, you know, we dealt with it and we got rid of them. They come back, we get rid of them. And just this summer, they came back, they were under the garage. Um, you know, we killed 13 of them um, with rat traps. And then we were finally able to seal up everything. Um, we were having difficulty purchasing rat traps at the local fleet farms because they were sold out. So this is a huge problem. So when you cannot even go to your Menards and fleet farm to buy rat traps, you know, I think that says something that you really have a big problem and that you can't even buy bait unless you buy like the big, um, like 20 pound um, buckets. Um, we don't use bait because we have a dog. And after talking with our vet, um, they don't have an antidote now for the new rat poisons. Um, so that is something scary for um, homeowners that have animals, that your your dog may ingest this and, you know, there may be no cure for it. Um, so that is something that is um, concerning for us. You know, we, over the years, I have gotten rid of um, a lot of my flower gardens. It's gotten to the point like I can't even enjoy my backyard. Like everybody else, you know, you want to be able to feed the birds, you want to have a bird feeder, you want to have the flowers, but you can't do it because it encourages the rats to come live in your house or your, your yard. So you do away with it. Um, your neighbor, you watch your neighbors. Um, I wouldn't say I saw the pictures online. I would not say that we have anybody on our street that has you know that big of a problem um with garbage in their yards that type of thing but i mean as far as like keeping shrubbery trim black trim back um bushes you know that type of thing um i think some neighbors could do a better job um do i think it's like to the point that it's so out of control that i need to report them to the city no but it's just something you know, that rabbit or rabbits or the rats like. You know, if you have any sort of like overgrown shrubbery in your yard, they're gonna be there right now because I mean we have so many rats right now. Um, they are out in the daytime. You see them in the neighbors' yards. They're getting run over in the streets here on Roscoe Street. Um, so it's just. I don't know. I guess I'm just frustrated like with everybody else because this seems to be, you know, a huge problem. 
I can eradicate them from my yard, but as long as my um, neighbors have bird feeders and wood piles, you know, and yards that are not kept up, um, you know, we're still going to have that problem. They're still going to come through our yard. Um, and so it just, it's frustrating. And I think that we need to do more than just, you know, waiting for people to report it and going out to homeowners and doing education. Um, I think this is beyond that. So we need to come up with a different plan here in Green Bay of how we're going to deal with this rat situation. All right, thank you. Any questions? Okay. Okay. You can come up. My name is Jerry Matushuk. I live at 1242 Cameron Street. I've been there since 1975. There have never been any rats in my uh, neighborhood that I was aware of. I did attend a meeting that uh, you had, I believe it was four years ago, at a church on uh, Oneida and uh, I'm not sure what street that is, if it's West Liberty or whatever, but you would give a, get, gave a presentation about rats um, I've trapped 27 rats in my yard. I took out my tomato plants because they started chewing on my tomatoes. Took out my bean plants. So in my garden, all I have left right now is some squash, and hopefully, as those ripen, they won't go after that. Um, I have an apple tree. I pick up the apples every night before it's dark. So I did that before I came in. Came in. I have. Uh, Two neighbors, one alongside me and one behind me, they both have fences. I plug the holes underneath the fence and they open right back up. I haven't been able to trap any more rats because they've gotten too smart and they won't go to the smart trap for peanut butter. I've tried uh, tomatoes, which like I had in my garden. I've tried some cheese and they don't want any of it. So I still got the rats coming into my yard I don't have shrubs. I do have some bushes in the front yard, and there's a one foot space between the bush and the house. And they aren't, they aren't in, the, in my front yard at this time. I know uh, I've talked to Nate a couple times. Uh, there's a problem with going into, looking into people's yards where they're fenced and says they're not allowed to enter a fenced in home and I think there that should be something that should be changed if possible I don't know if it's private property private property he could walk on my property and walk on anybody else's property that's not fenced but if it's a fence why can't he have the right to get a good look and assess what the situation is looking over the top of a fence is not accomplishing uh, <coughs> needs to be done Any questions for me? No. No. Right, thank thank you. you. Is there anyone else on Zoom who would like to speak to this issue? If so, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the committee. Um, Hi. Yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, Jean Eckers again. I live at 905 South Fisk. I lost the visual of the meeting, but um, as I listened to the others speak, I thought of something else. First, I want to mention that the rats that I'm seeing are during the daytime, which I thought was kind of odd that they're out during the day. The second thing, I remembered that my dad, who lives over at 1435 Oak Ridge Drive, that's on the west side of military. Um, last year and this year, he's had lots of rats in his yard. For the first time, Dad, Dad's still in the house I grew up in, so he's been in that house for 50-some years, but in just in the last couple of years, um, he's, he's seen multiple, multiple rats uh, around his bird feeder, so Dad stopped feeding his birds, but 
the rats are still around, so I don't know where they're coming, but just wanted to let you know that the problem is also on the west side of military, uh, in addition to 905 South Fisk and then going east from there. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else on Zoom who would like to speak to this issue? If so, please unmute yourself and state your name and address for the committee. Hi, I'm Tracy Tillett. I'm at 1201 8th Street. I didn't intend to speak tonight, but uh, we had just recently noticed the rat issue this summer. Um, we have a neighbor that has not maintained her bus side or back of her yard for years. Um, it's going up, going up with weeds. So one of the neighbor's children, neighborhood children noticed a rat on Saturday, scared of new dairies on us. But I said, well, now I know there's two. I've seen two. So we you don't know, want to have all my neighbors, but I finally called and said, hey, can something be done with this woman's property to have her clean up these weeds? Okay, so now she's angry because she got notice on her front door that she needed to clean up the weeds. Okay, clean up the weeds. If you look at her garage building, the majority of it has fallen down at where it meets the ground because it's housing the rats. I have a wooden fence, six foot wooden fence, and they're coming under it. So we've put many rat traps out. We can catch one or two here and there, but that's Again, they're getting too smart for that. I tried the nice way of oils and like someone else said, the baking soda thing. I've now spent over $200 on stuff to try to get rid of these rats. Um, I just put $40,000 into my house with siding, windows, all of that in the last couple of years and taking a tree home that was rotten, all that kind of thing. I would have never done that had I realized these rats were here. I've been here 25 years and I've never seen one until this summer. So I called the city again. Can you please have something done about this woman's garage? I saw an inspector come over. I called him up. I'm like, did you tell me what happened? Yeah, she, it's definitely not a solid building. She needs to do something about it. That was like three weeks ago. I don't, the two people that are listed as the people in the city that control the rats, I haven't spoken to them. Seeing them or anything, I've been dealing with a Scott Nelson, I believe his name is. And I'm just representing a group of our neighbors because they work during the day and they don't want to have to be falling and whatever. So, yeah, we definitely have a problem. They're now across the street of Meacham and people are catching them in their backyards the other way. It's a problem, it's a big problem. But I wish we would hold these neighbors accountable that are having the issue because. It's been a good month now that we've known and we've reported that this is going on and nothing seems to be being done. So it's a big issue and I think we need to have the city involved because we as homeowners can't do it by ourselves. We can eliminate our own yards and our weeds and our bird feeders and our everything else, but when you have some homeowners that aren't being held accountable, there's nothing that the rest of us can do about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tulot. Is there anyone else on Zoom who would like to speak to this issue? Motion to close the floor. And a second. Second. All the grant, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Sounds like we have people There's that wanted stuff. to add. So to what's the oh. next, th what's the next step that's going to be taken? I know we had the meeting, but what's the next step? We'll be discussing that. Yeah. I, I wanted to say one more thing. A couple of my neighbors next to me, they're in their 80s. They put out, they hired uh, Orkin. They put out the uh, poison boxes. They're not effective. They've come and chewed on some poison a little bit, but not enough for it's controlling the population of the rats. Okay, thank you. All in favor to close the floor? Aye. 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 Nate, I have a question. Can I ask Bill a question again? Yep. Inspector Pappy, I heard that lady saying that it's been three weeks, nothing's done about her neighbor's rack. What is a timetable for something like that? I'm sure you can't do it in three weeks. Sure. So we'll send orders 
um, substantiate the violation would give the uh, the property owner um, time to voluntarily comply. So anywhere it's anywhere from 15 to 30 days, we'll give them a, a time to contact us and come up with a plan. Um, there could be financial reasons. There, there's a lot of individual circumstances. Why, if there is a violation, what what's what circumstances they have. So we're going to give them an opportunity to, to get it corrected. If it is dilapidated, they have to come up with a plan of repairing it, possibly taking it down, possibly there's there's a financial cost to that. Um, so we'll try to mitigate if there are rats in there. Um, we're definitely going to have, they're going to have to make sure they do something about that. Um, we have tools in our ordinance that if they refuse and if they don't do anything about it and we do substantiate that there, there are rats there, we can abate them. The cost of that abatement gets billed back to the owner. Um, much like we do lot cleanups and stuff. So we're, we're going to work with folks though, we're going to work with residents to try to get them to voluntarily comply and try to get them on a plan where um, it's not costing them an excessive amount of money, but they can make the, the, the proper repairs. So um, that's kind of our, our method of how we, how we work with everybody. Thank you. Um, have we been able to narrow down what the main source is that's attracting them? I wish I knew. Okay. It's food water shelter and it's in every, I've been in every district on the west side. It's not just exclusive to certain areas. I've been, I've been with the city for since 2011. Um, started as a compliance inspector doing this stuff. Um, it, it's, it's where the resources are, that's where they're going to be. Um, so that's why, when, that's what, what you heard tonight is why I included those photos. Um, it doesn't, it, we'll get 90% and the majority of the people and the, the residents, everybody that we talk to here, they do a great job. Um, yards are kept up, but if there's a small percentage of people that aren't doing their part, that are, have, have waste building up in their, in their garage because they're not storing their, their food waste properly, and they're throwing garbage bags in their garage like some of the photos I showed you, that can attract them. Um, we can't go into people's garages, so a lot of times it takes, by the time we get that complaint, it's spilling over. So it's a combination of all those factors, but really what it boils down to um, is food, water, shelter. That's what they need to survive, um, so that's what we focus on. And it's not just, you know, I want people to feed the birds. That's not, it's not a bird feeder issue. It's, it's more than that. It's, it's a combination of all those resources. Um, the gentleman that was picking up apples, that's awesome. That he's, that, that's exactly what I recommend everybody do, but not everybody does that. I could have included some photos from people just, you know, just yesterday where there's rotten apples all over the ground and there's rats there. So it's, it's getting everyone to get on board with making sure that everybody's doing their part. It can't just be 75%. When we do that in those areas, I've seen neighborhood associations that have knocked their population way, way down and held it for a while because they get majority people on board. But we focus our attention on the ones that aren't doing their part. And that's why we use the, tool, the tools that you guys give us um, in our ordinances in regards to nuisance abatements and you know, those sort of application tools. So some of the apples that you could make an order against that, just that. Correct. Right. Yeah. If there's in our rat ordinance that was passed a lot, that's a tool that we have. So okay. if if those folks aren't picking it up, so if we re receive a complaint and there's items in a yard that need to be picked up and they're contributing to it, we'll make sure that that gets removed. If they refuse, then we'll remove it for them, okay. and the cost for that gets billed as a lot of cleanup. And if there's a fenced-in area and you get a complaint, you can't. We have to have a substantiated complaint. So somebody, it, regardless of like if it's fenced in, we can still follow up on that complaint. Um, when we do proactive surveys, we're not peeking in right, people's fences. Right. But if somebody gets a sends us a complaint that there's rats in his backyard and we believe the issues in the backyard because there's garbage or whatever the their, the concern is in the backyard, we will go follow up on that. If the um, resident refuses entry um, and doesn't voluntarily let us in, we can obtain ins an inspection warrant. Um, and then we would serve the inspection warrant. We'd bring uh, police with us and we'd go in the backyard and inspect. If we determine that there are violations, they would get orders and we would follow our normal protocol with making sure that everything gets corrected. So regarding that rat ordinance, how long has it been in play? Since I've been here, um, 2011. So it's been there for a while. So you've been working with it for a while. Is there anything that you think may need to be changed to benefit the residents and help the city? It's a good question. Um, it, it, the difficult part is is compliance, is getting that, um, 
the, the small percentage of the people that just aren't responding, and it takes us um, a lot of like reinspection fees, citations, lot cleanups. Um, we do lot cleanups every every Wednesday about, um, and that's pretty frequent throughout throughout the year, even into the winter, where people aren't you know picking up their garbage. You see some of the photos of what I've included. Um, it's that stuff that you know. You get, you've given me a lot of tools. I have two compliance inspectors now. This is the first year we've had that, and it's making a difference. A lot of the, the complaints that we're receiving is them going out in the neighborhoods and then people telling us. And when we do proactive surveys, it's folks coming in and saying, we have a problem, it's right here. Well, let, and then they follow up with that. Um, so part of that, those number of complaints are proactive complaints where we've entered them in because we've talked to neighbors and said, they have a problem, we have a problem in this area. Nate and John will go out and then they'll find you know, other houses. So that resource has helped. Um, I know if there's others, I can, I know I can, the council has been very receptive to doing that. So I'm, I'm all ears, but the biggest thing is, is cleaning up their, yeah, cleaning up their properties and making sure that everybody's doing their part. It can't just be 70%, 80%, it needs to be 100% on a block. And that's been the difficulty. Um, it's been getting everybody on board and a lot of times by the time it takes us that we spend all of our attention cleaning up maybe a nuisance property it we end up right back to a, another one and it just kind of creates a cycle now, now when it comes to bird feeders and bass and stuff, is there a way to do that or should those just be eliminated for now no they, they don't have to eliminate them it's just making sure that that food gets restricted so it's just that birds will get it. a lot of times if a squirrel can get at it a rat can get at it too if a squirrel can climb up and get to the feeder a rat's going to be able to get at it too so spill catchments removing them at night um little educate that's part of the educational stuff it's we don't want people to have to take take care of them. They just have to, if they are experiencing a rat issue, they have to be a little bit more vigilant in making sure that some of those resources are restricted so they can still enjoy the activity, but do it in a way where it's not gonna contribute to the problem. Um, some of the bigger areas is when we see the, f the food all over the ground and it's spilled all over the ground. There's some photos in there um, that you'll see. There's one in particular, that's all seed. That's all over the ground. And that was an extensive, and. When you have that amount of food, a rat's um, incubation, or, you know, a rat can, is, is sexually mature only after a couple months. And that rat can get pregnant within 48 hours after having um, their litter. So it can, the, the half-life of that can, can spread really quickly. So when there's a lot of resources, there'll be a lot of rats. So that's why we focus on our educational tools. So whether it's proactive inspections that we're doing in all these areas, or in complaints, all of that help so so someone mentioned the animal are there trained animals to sniff these out in New York they use dogs um, you know I think I don't, I'm not expert in that but I know there's a rat terrier that's probably how it got its name um, if, if you Google there's some YouTube videos where there's groups in New York um, we've spent time with one of the foremost experts dr. Bobby Corrigan who knows everything there is to know about rats um, and he'll say the exact same thing food water shelter uh, where there's people, there usually tends to be um, garbage and waste issues because not everybody you know, handles those appropriately, um, and that what's what leads to rodents. If I had a magic wand that would get the rats to all go away, believe me, it would have been gone a long time ago. But it's it's not it's not that easy. But the population does go down if we get everybody on board, and everybody reports it. You may not know this, but you know how many rats have been killed this year? I do not. I do not. Um, Probably, probably quite a bit, but I try to keep those numbers down because the last time that the news was involved, I got a lot of comments from PETA, so we probably don't want to do that again, <laughs> Stevens. So, um, yeah. But it, it is probably significant. Okay. And it's not just a Green Bay issue. I've had other villages and municipalities have contacted me asking for advice. I know I've seen you on the news. How do we go about dealing with it? So it's not just, it's, this isn't exclusively to a Green Bay issue. I know a resident mentioned the old Chaco building. Are we seeing any issues with businesses or things that they're doing that they could be doing better? Uh, Chaco's in the village was in the village of Eshwabaran, so I can't speak to that. Okay. Um, but the, um, a lot of times, in regards to businesses, um, if it's food and they're and they're and they're as generating waste, 
um, the dumpsters, how long those dumpsters are sitting out there and how long that food is there. Um, a lot of times you'll see on the bottom of dumpsters there'll be holes on the bottom for drainage if it rains the water. Well if there's holes on the bottom of it, the rats can go in and get the food. So if you got a whole bunch of food waste from everybody scraping their plates into a garbage and they throw those bags in there, that generates an odor that attracts rodents. That's what leads to the problem. I mean, if you, you'll Google videos in New York where you'll see them coming right out of garbage because there's food there. So that's what we educate the businesses on when we get complaints or we know that they're in that area. We're very strict with enforcement, making sure that that garbage gets gets emptied on a, on a very timely basis. If not, we'll do it and bill it back. I know that. And then you guys get calls. We with a business in my so. district. I mean, this was this used to be a big issue a few years back when all those numbers were up. Mm -hmm. A lot of that was in my issue, mm -hmm. in my uh, district. And uh, I know I remember there's one business that you took care of, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it's it's I think it's a problem we take seriously, certainly. And uh, it's a difficult problem in that we're always going to have rats. You're never going to eliminate every freaking rat. Um, but there is, you know, I mean, like it, this uptick now, it's not in my district. We took care of business and things are better. It took a couple of years, two, three years. But, you know, I, I, that's why I, I, I really uh, urge all of you, report, report, report. The more information our, our staff has, the more work they can do. And, and we've got the tool where, I mean, if you talk to your neighbor, that's great. I mean, please do that. that that's part of the, you know, we appreciate that. But you can't enforce it. You can't force your neighbor to do anything. We can and will. We don't want to push them, the rats around. We want to identify where the issue is and knock that population down and try to eliminate them right where, right where it is. So that's where the reporting comes in very, very handy to us. I, I, I thought we were moving up to Howard. <laughs> your words, not mine. <laughs> so is there anything you would change? Do we need to lower the grass you know, length? Is there anything we can temporarily adjust or tighten up it, until it's under control? It, it, any, any resources where they can provide harborage, that all helps. Um, that's not exclusively going to do it, but that would help. Um, I, people use the example bird feeders, but gardens. I don't, people can have gardens. I want them to be able to produce their food, but, when they, but if there's a rat issue in that area, they need to make sure that how they're growing the food, um, how it's protected, how they're taking steps to kind of build those rodents and critters out. Um, have to be a little bit more vigilant so it's not providing a food resource like the, like the gentleman that had, you know, was eating his tomato. That if humans will eat it, rats will eat it too. So it's not exclusively to that, but it's kind of all encompassing. So um, part of our education process is we'll, we'll encourage folks to say, listen, it's, this is contributing to it. If it is, if, you know, there's extra foliage in that particular area where it's easy, more easily concealed. Um, we'll encourage them to cut it down and we do have tools that allow us to, you know, if we consider it a nuisance um, that's contributing to it, to abate that. Um, but that's not, there's not one particular thing. It's accumulation of a lot of things, okay. if that makes sense. Yeah, but I just don't know if there's anything we can change to help make this easier. There's always, uh, you know, um, there's always two sides, you know, like there's no mow man, which is cool, it's great, I, I get the purpose, that's awesome. But does that provide harborage? Absolutely it does. So it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it, we don't have to get rid of it. We just have to be a little bit more vigilant on if we're doing that, making sure that we're not, we're not providing a, an area where it's, you know, creating a nuisance. Typically, that's not the case. Usually, it's, I mean, on the photos, usually it's um, just disregard for a lot of the ordinance. Yeah, okay. things we should be. Yeah, pretty easy stuff. It's not just long grass. Tweak. It's just, it's accumulation of a lot of things. Well, I know we put you on the spot regarding yeah. the ordinance, but if you want to take some time and think about it, mm -hmm. please bring it back to us. Sure, absolutely. I will definitely review it. We, we're reviewing our other ordinance, other ordinances and chapters and stuff. Um, I think those will be coming um, here pretty soon, Lacey, um, for you all to review. Um, our housing maintenance code, our building code, all of those things help to get rid of the rat population. We have secure buildings. We have to make sure buildings are, don't have gaps, cracks, things like that. That helps build them out. That helps reduce the uh, rodent population. So we're pretty strict, as you guys, all of you have probably have gotten calls. Uh, but it's for our purposes to make sure that everybody has a safe place to stay. We don't want them 
coming into home. So all that helps. But yes, I would re I'll review it and take a look at our, if we need to beef it up, I will definitely make some suggestions. Perfect. Not beef it up, rat it up. <laughs> I was waiting for that over oh, there. It's kind of weird, not weird, listening to this. I mean, on my east side where I'm an alderman, we have my deer issue. Mm -hmm. And I'm attacking this because I've got a half dozen constituents that have lifelong diseases from tick-borne mm -hmm. problems, yeah. and I've got people feeding these deer, mm -hmm. which are also bringing in now coyotes in people's mm -hmm. backyards and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I, people won't tell me who these people are. They don't okay. want to get in trouble. So. They, if we could just get people to stop feeding them, which we don't have here, this is garbage and stuff that's feeding them. It's similar, you know, but the different. You know, but they think deer are cute; they're pretty. For who? Nobody wants a rat in their yard. Have they have you ever gone to a, a national park or like one of the big parks? One of right. the first things the park rangers do: don't feed the animals. Exactly. Don't feed the bugs. Why is that? They need to learn to for you know to find their own food. Yeah. When you're providing those resources and. I'm sure there's experts in the DNR that are far more knowledgeable than I am, but it, it, they get used to that, and then it yeah. causes diseases and things like that. So and the other thing I see right behind my house, I had a field that behind Gander Chevrolet that they're going to build a great big shed, so they took down all the shrubs, the trees, and everything, and now I can look out my front window and see raccoons and people staring at me, or yeah. creatures that I've never seen there mm -hmm. in the 40 years I've lived there. Yeah. The one thing you did say, now yeah. you said we should, the county buys the traps, we should not. I would not recommend doing that. As did those heard. traps work? Because I'm hearing from these people that first they can't get traps, yeah. and the ones they do get don't work. So rats are uh, neophobic. They get, they're afraid of new things in their environment. And also when a rat, like I think, I forgot who the individual was that was using the traps and all of a sudden they didn't work. It's pretty common because rats are very smart. They're very intelligent. If a couple of their buddies gets gets hit on, on the rat trap and those aren't clean those aren't sanitized and th they will they'll be smart enough they'll they'll avoid those so they'll work it does work to knock the population down um, but there needs to be a sanitation process with the traps they need to put new traps out what what food that they're using um, a lot of times we'll recommend all right wh what is the natural food or wh where are they getting is it bird seed um, we'll try to get them comfortable coming to the bird seed and then the pest professionals or the homeowners will, will utilize that as a, a that as a food source to eliminate them. So, um, I would not recommend that. There's liability issues when it comes to if the city's providing that and we're providing that to. I don't know if you ever tried to set one some of them mm -hmm. some of them traps. They're very tricky and they're they're very sensitive. Um, child, some elderly person that has difficulty setting those. I don't want them to lose a finger or get, get hurt. Um, there's a liability cost that, that, that comes with that. That's where educational part comes in. Um, more than happy to educate folks on what to do and what not to do, things that work, not work, bait boxes, very passive form of, of um, eradication because you just put a, a black box with a hole in, the poison gets in and then it just it sits there. Well. Much, the rats are, you know, a couple of them will go to it and the object is to bring the poison back to the burrows and then it spreads throughout. Um, that might work a couple times, but as you know about the, I told you about the half-life and how they're, they're ex expanding, they could be moving from place to place. So it, it's, it's things like that where when we find where they are, we got to make sure that we're taking aggressive approaches to make sure we're eliminating them right there. In the old program, did the county buy them and then dispense them to Citizens, yeah. or did the, the county, county spent, go set them up? And the county spent, no, 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 they, they spent five thousand dollars, and I believe they had they offered them for free. Some neighborhood associations would, you know, would go get them. residents would go get them. Um, they had them for quite a while. I don't. You would have to ask the county, but I know that they were there for. They were being stored there for for quite a while. Yeah, I, don't know. I assume there are, if, unless Chris was mistaken, unless he. I thought he just confused the county with the city. But maybe the county still has some. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know. It was. Um, I would recommend contacting Bernie Erickson. He was the point person for that. Yes, Bernie now. was the one that that um, put five thousand dollars in the in the county budget to add yeah. to add those. So the, the thing we, is we, we put our focus on education. Um, and you can, if you look back at the numbers, um, the number of reports. I mean, we had two hundred eight and two twenty seven or two seventy seven in twenty eighteen. The next two years, it was seventy eight and sixty nine. Um, could there have been people that may not have called in? Sure, but the news was involved. I mean, you can Google 
a lot of different news stations, and you'll see some very creative videos that were that were utilized to really stir up, uh, you know, some stuff. Rat's but, nest. Yeah, there's another one. Um, but it, the numbers went down because a lot of the different neighborhoods they they took an act, active, aggressive approach about letting us know where the violations are and everybody getting on the same page, making sure that um, that stuff wasn't tolerated and that it was cleaned up. The, the thing with traps is you might trap other things than rats too. They Correct. don't really want to trap. Same thing with poisons. It, you're not you're not necessarily poisoning just rats if you're and how people do that. That's the other part of what we educate. We don't want people just throwing decon all over the place because people's dogs do get sick, um, other wildlife get sick. So there's a process that 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 goes into that. So. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bill. So what are we on tonight? Well, uh, there's really, I mean, staff is going to proceed as they've been doing. There's just uh, the report. What we got is a report, so we see them place on file the report. There's no action to take on it. Staff is acting on it, and if I think the more people work together and the more they, they uh, work with the city, the sooner we'll tamp this down like, you know, happened in my district. You know, we got, we got it under control. Um, the only way to go, I'm afraid. You know, I don't know what else we can do. So, motion to receive and place on file for the report. Second. I Second. see someone that wants to speak. If do we want to open up the. Um, can I make a motion a to open the uh, sure. floor again? All right. Did you just have a motion? Yeah, I'm sorry, there was no I second. Yeah, there was a second. Okay. To receive and place on file? Correct. Do you want to open the floor before you vote on it? Sure. Sure, if someone wants to speak, yeah. sure. Motion. So you, you made, made the motion. The motion. Second. Second. Oh. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I just, the fact that they mentioned about, you know, um, John and, and Nate educating us, um, <coughs> the fact that people are seeing them during the daytime tells us that there, there's an infestation of them and how fast they reproduce. Mm. And even though we're managing our own yards, and we aren't a privy to everybody else's situation. I know they're doing a good job and everything that they can to try to address the issues, but they're still coming and they're coming over my fence. I'm digging rock under it, they're coming over. I had tomato plants, I had an above ground planter up. They're climbing, you know, so you remove all this stuff. I have perennials, they're digging out roots. My dogs have gotten sick. I guess my point is, it, it it would be, I don't know if it's an issue, like how the police have dogs, like a canine unit for drugs. Like, could, you know, if Green Bay has an issue, can we maybe invest in dogs? I could find where some of these boroughs are and then address the homeowners. I don't know, I'm, I just wanted to mention that because Perhaps the staff the traps. could look into uh, a rat terrier if that'd be something that would I personally help. Do you mean, I'm sorry, do you mean like contractor services? Or if there's an actual eradication? I mean, one of the things to note is most of this is private property. So in order to take a dog that we would right. own, that would be problematic. But to hire a contractor, I don't, I don't know. Are we talking about a contractor or to actually buy a dog? I don't know. I, I want more info altogether. My issue is it be that to look at the yeah. at the possibility and what the what pitfalls the are and what the possibilities are. Our, our so staff can identify yeah. the boroughs. Oh. It's what do you do when you find the boroughs, right? Because oh. you're like we'd say when well, you have these boroughs, but then it, it, it's an enforcement issue, right? Yeah. So it's not really. It, it's almost like we'd have to do. We could do a human inspection. Right to do maybe if there's a spot where we say oh this is really a this is a really hot spot right here we could go out a little further and do the human inspection they because they can track the girls our guys are really good okay I mean mm -hmm. you know so that maybe would be better to do a little bit more education and wider than we normally do and it's not necessarily the girls they might be in a neighbor's garage so yeah. how do I I have to in order for me to be able to have the justification to just go in your garage mm -hmm. I have to have proof. So if somebody says that I know the rats are there, I prove I can see it on uh, this date and this time I saw them go in there. I if they refuse 
entry, I can get a warrant from the from the judge, municipal court judge, and then we can serve the warrant and go in and check yes. and see if there is it. We have that ability to do that, but we just can't just go in people's yeah. homes. We can't no, just I go in their that. garage. It's, it, there's a process that we have to have to go about. So if we can identify that that's where they are, most definitely will we will we eradicate that. But we got to prove that th this is where they're at, and that's it's very it's very challenging and difficult to do. Okay. Yeah, I'm just because I I've done everything that I've needed to, and I'm still having the issue. And I spend some money on these traps, or you know, like you said, and I maybe I'm not cleaning them right, but I I'm, I haven't been able to catch any, and but they're still coming. Yeah, and if there are dogs for bed bugs. Um, there are pest con you know, pest control people who utilize a dog for sniffing bed bugs that are utilized a lot in um, hotels and, and apartment complexes that we've worked with. If there is a service out there that provides uh, provides that, believe me, we'll we'll, we'll investigate it. And if we need to add it to an uh, ordinance, I'll definitely work with Cheryl and, and the council to do whatever we need to do to um, if it's an effective tool. But I don't want to waste taxpayer dollars right. on something that's not going to be effective. Um, so. I mean, that, that's why I'm not recommending rat traps. Cheryl, on the next uh, GBN meeting, which is coming in October, can mm -hmm. we get this on that agenda? Um, they maybe give sure flyers. Got it set, but I'll, I'll contact Michael. Yeah, and give flyers to all the uh, yeah, we can, we can absolutely presidents. We can absolutely do that. Yep. So they can start talking in our neighborhoods again. As a point of additional information, I know we have records from the last time um, like a, a formal pest control service was consulted, mm -hmm. and I think the city told them maybe they could spend $10,000, and the pest control service had said, then you should just do edit education because that's all you can afford. And then like that, I have the file. And the, the county spent $5,000 on traps, but um, when we, we did look into a contractor, the city did about eradication and more um, using contractor services. And the ten thousand dollar number was literally just enough for education, not to actually take any steps. But we can look into additional services if they're warranted, like with the, you know, with the deer, with the sharpshooter services, different services. But they're you know, some of those services are free of cost. They would just rely on homeowners. I believe the floor is open. The gentleman in blue on mm -hmm. to speak. So uh, traps are no longer effective. Uh, Follow the instructions I was given for cleaning each time I got a rat. What can I do now to eliminate the rats? They aren't going for the poison, and they aren't going for the traps. What? We got to identify. We got to identify where they are. You know, that's what we got to identify in your neighborhood. We got to identify where. Where is the harborage? Where are they living? And why do they why do they continue to come in your neighborhood? Because there's resources there. So we have to identify where the harborage is, where the food, where the water sources are, eliminate, restrict those, and find out where the main hub of where they're all living and eliminate that. Because what you're doing is you're you're catching the rats, the rat traps as they're coming, but the problem is is they're continuing to reproduce back at the main hub. So you won't be able to catch and kill them to the as many as where they're at, where their main nest is. So we need to track where their main nest is. So it, it's important for your, your neighbor, if you see anything, report that. If that good, keep keep doing it. If you can tell me where you see them, where they're coming at night, where where are they coming out of, where, where are others seeing them coming in, we will investigate it. Well, I know they're coming from my neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> they get behind me and alongside me. Yep, keep reporting that, because that's what we need. And we'll we'll take enforcement action. It may take a little time, but make a motion to close the floor. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have a motion on the floor as well. Yep. There's even like a five. Yeah. And we have a second, right? Yeah. Yes. Aye. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays. All right, nice have it. So everything that we discussed this evening is a recommendation to Common Council, which will be on October 3rd at 6 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, yes. Okay. Number two, consideration of possible action on application for available Class B liquor and Class B beer license for Estello Tijuana LLC at 1911 University Avenue with a licensed premise description as kitchen, basement, main bar with approval of the proper authorities. Attorney? Um, I'm going to defer to PD. All right, PD. 
Uh, we are recommending denial. We have for the past couple months tried to get a hold of people and they're not returning any phone calls that we're making. We just haven't heard anything at all. Have we uh, contacted them? And it seems to be a Hispanic name. Has we reached out with an interpreter at all? Uh, they, they do speak English. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah, they, they had a liquor license before. They uh -huh. neglected to renew it. Right after that, then they applied to get a new one, so they know the whole process, oh, okay. and they just, we've tried, and they don't answer us. They were here last year. They have a food truck. They tried, right. they tried to go to a, the bar on University. And that's been closed down for a while now, so. No. Motion to deny. All right, do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? All right, ayes have it. Ready? So not as slow in here as it is in council. Go ahead. Okay. Consideration of the possible action on a Class B liquor and Class B beer license for SBG Apple North 4 LLC at 2420 East Mason Street with a license premise description as restaurant and freestanding bar with approval of the proper authorities. Attorney? No objections. Please? Please confirm. All right. Motion to concur. Concur. Motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Informational, the liquor violation report. Okay. Um, we have had two property referrals, three liquor violations, one ordinance violation, and two written warnings. Um, our first one here is going to be for the Black Saddle. A warning was issued for no licensed operator on premises. Um, and then the bouncer from there was also issued a warning for loitering in a licensed premises after hours. A property for referral was then done also for the property owner. Um, the additional one on August 27th was for the Black Saddle as well, and the bouncer was issued a citation for disorderly conduct for his involvement in a disturbance. And on September 4th, a tavern check was conducted at Cock and Bowl. Um, and the bartenders that were working that evening, there were three of them were issued citations for bartending without an operator's license. The bar was shut down for the evening and a property referral was also issued to the property owner. Thank you. You have the address for the first one, that Saddle? Yep, it's 201 North Washington Street. Right in the corner. Okay. The clerk's licensing report? Yes. Uh, just, just a question. Mm -hmm. Uh, the very first one with um, the uh, uh, Delsman Express, 606 Delsman. Bartending without an operator's license? Bartending? It's not a bar, it's a, it's a gas station. So does that mean selling the liquor? Okay. Yes. Never mind. All people Bartending are, is what threw me. Right. All people who, and you know, operator, bartender are interchangeable um, terms. So anyone who sells or serves should have an operator's license. Okay. I'll tend to remember that from now on. All right. Clerk? Okay. So, you know, normally um, Deputy Clerk um, Pugge is here. She's off today. Uh, as you can see on the report, um, there have been some, like, um, for instance, Madrid, she was supposed to file an extension. She has yet to do that. Same thing with Family Dollar. Um, and I think everything else pretty much speaks for itself. Okay. Any questions about that? Not for me. Okay. Report by Clerk Jeffries. Okay, so this is just an update on what's going on. 2024 is right on the corner. Um, so just wrapping up April. Uh, we had a really excellent turnout in April 23. Just Those are just the bottom numbers for the total number of votes and turnout. Um, tur remember, turnout is always, the denominator is always the eligible voters, not the registered. So we have about 81,000 eligible voters. That's a number that is given to us by the Department of Administration, as well as you can get that number from the census. Um, an eligible voter is somebody who is over 18, who is otherwise eligible to vote, so not incarcerated, not adjudicated, incompetent, et cetera. Um, our population went down slightly, so we have 106,597. Um, this summer, what we've been working on is voter record maintenance. We do that all year. Um, the indefinitely confined, basically updating those lists, people who have died, people who are uh, 
felons who are on paper and people who've been adjudicated incompetent. So we are continuously upgrading our and updating our voter um, records. But there is one thing that happens uh, in the odd year after November, and that's the four-year maintenance. And these are people who have not voted in four years. And so those, the, the legislature is very strict about that process. Um, the ERIC process, which I'll talk about in, in a second, has one extra step. But essentially, the WEC, the Wisconsin Elections Commission, sends out thousands of postcards saying, you haven't voted in four years. Do you still live here? Are you still a voter? And if it, come ba if it comes back to me um, uh, undeliverable, then I deactivate them. And if I don't get a response, then they are automatically deactivated. So we had about 1,365 records that we deactivated from the four-year maintenance. Um, now, Eric is a very interesting uh, conglomeration that we um, belong to. Um, it is the Electronic Registration Information Center. And about 25 states and DC uh, are members. And essentially, what it does is, if you know, if um, John moves from Green Bay to Toledo, and John in Toledo takes out a cable bill, electric bill, if um, Ohio, which I'm not sure if it does, so let me say, let me say Patterson, New Jersey instead. So John moves to Patterson, New Jersey. Um, he takes out the electric bill, the, the cable bill. Um, because New Jersey participates in ERIC, um, we're gonna, he's gonna, we're gonna get a note saying, hey, we don't think John lives in Green Bay anymore. Is he still your voter? And so we send, they send out a postcard, it comes back to us undeliverable, then we send out a letter, that comes back to us undeliverable, we deactivate them. So that's what we've been doing. And what's nice about ERIC is that um, it just really keeps that voter record um, really up to date, really nicely compact as it should be. Um, I, I belong to two professional organizations, um, Wisconsin Municipal Clerks and the Partnership for Large Election Jurisdictions. Um, Deputy Clerk Fugge also belongs to the WMCA. We both completed, completed our training. There's a three-year training, so we're very excited about that. Uh, looking forward to 2024, which is right around the corner. Um, so we have uh, created a poll worker curriculum to help our training uh, in the clerk's office. So we have videos, we have in person, we have lesson plans, we have self checks. Um, so we're very, very excited about implementing this. Um, we have to get some approval from the WC, but they're fairly, they're very um, supportive of clerks and uh, our training regimes, regimens. Um, I do not anticipate polling locations changing very much in 2024. I did lose one on the west side. I have <laughs> since replaced. I, there is one that I'm a little concerned about on the east side, so I need to check in. But other than those two, well, like I said, the one on the west side I've replaced. I do not anticipate a lot of movement for 24, so that's a good thing. Um, we do need to purchase two new DS200s. Those are the tabulators. Um, yeah, these machines are just not, we've had them fixed numerous times and they're just not working so well. So we, you will see that in the um, capital expenditures. Uh, and then the WEC redesigned the envelopes. I think this had come to the um, Finance Committee. I'm very excited about the envelopes. They're beautiful, they're simple, they're clear. Um, there are three different types of envelopes, so now one envelope doesn't have to do all three types of absentee ballots, so that's really very helpful. Um, and we've already received our special voting deputy and military overseas envelopes. I've already ordered those. So. Any questions? Did the audit uh, say they're overseas? Did they get there sooner, or did they all go at the same time? That is a really good question. So, um, because the presidential preference, normally the answer is no. Whenever people who are getting them by mail, um, usually that's the same as military overseas. However, the April presidential preference occurs um, less than the 47 days after the um, February primary. So essentially, there is potential that there are people who are voted on in February, the election won't happen before those ballots have to go out. So what happened four years ago when I was not the clerk was there was, I think, I think
think what's going to happen is that there is presidential only preference ballot that will go out to military and overseas uh, mid-February so they can get that 47 days. Okay. Then we'd have to send out the other for the people who are overseas, so military and those who are temporarily overseas can vote in the all the elections permanently overseas who will be voting presidential. So um, I think we'll send out another one that 21 days ahead of the presidential preference. So this makes it a little unusual, but and that's why it's an interesting question you ask, um, because this, this time around it will be unusual, but every other election they receive them the same time that everybody else does. Either 47 days for federal or 21 for state and local. Okay. Motion to receive and place and file all three items. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion to adjourn it. Do a second. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll let you do it. Oh. I, didn't know <laughs> I was just going to.